Next, let's talk about the elimination characteristics of certain drugs. Drugs typically show one of two kinds of elimination. The first is known as zero-order elimination, and the second is known as first-order elimination. Most drugs actually show first-order elimination, but it's important to know about zero-order as well. A drug is said to have zero-order elimination when its clearance proceeds by a constant amount per unit time. In our hypothetical drug, notice that with each hour, a constant amount of drug is being removed from the body. Here we have it written as 2.5 units, but we could have just as easily have said 200 milligrams or 100 milligrams. Thus, if we started with a concentration of 10 milligrams per drug for every milliliter of plasma, we would find that after the first hour, we would have 7.5 milligrams per milliliter. After the second hour, 5. After the third, 2.5, and so on. Phenetoin, ethanol, and aspirin exhibit zero-order elimination at high or toxic concentrations, and you can remember this with the mnemonic here. First-order elimination, on the other hand, is elimination which proceeds by a certain fraction per unit time. You can see in our hypothetical example that this fraction is 0 0.5, or 50%. Again, suppose that we started with a plasma concentration of 10 milligrams per milliliter. By the end of the first hour, this has been decreased by 50%. Therefore, our concentration is 5 milligrams per milliliter. By the end of the second hour, the concentration has decreased by another 50%, and therefore our plasma concentration is 2.5 milligrams per milliliter. By the next hour, we're down to 1.25 milligrams per milliliter. Notice that this kind of graph gives an exponential curve. Next, let's talk about how physicians can manipulate the pH of urine to increase the clearance of drugs. Here, I'm going to draw a simplified nephron. On either side, of course, we have the kidney interstitium and the blood vessels which run through it. Of course, in the lumen, we have the production of urine, which is on its way out. Once a drug enters the urine, one of two things can happen. The drug can either be reabsorbed, moving from the lumen into the kidney interstitium and then back into the circulation, or the drug can be excreted as urine. And one of the main determinants of this movement, either back into the body or out into the urine, is the charge of the drug. Positively or negatively charged drugs will not be able to cross the epithelial barrier of the lumen. Because, as you know, highly charged or highly polarized substances do not easily cross cell membranes. Molecules which are uncharged, on the other hand, are more lipid-soluble or lipophilic and can pass through the epithelial barrier and re-enter the blood circulation. Therefore, one way to increase the excretion of drugs is to make sure that the drug is in its charged form when it's in the urine. For weak acids, like phenobarbital, methotrexate, and aspirin, we do this by making the urine basic. That is, we increase the pH. When we increase the pH, the reaction that you see here is driven to the right. That is, in basic solutions, weak acids are more likely to become deprotonated. That is, to release their hydrogen as a proton. Of course, when this happens, our weak acid becomes its conjugate base and holds a negative charge, which prevents it from being reabsorbed into the blood. The case for weak bases, for example amphetamines, is just the opposite. In this case, we want to make the urine more acidic. That is, we want to lower the urine pH. When we make urine more acidic, we are, of course, adding more protons to the urine. If you remember from organic chemistry, this weak base will pick up this proton and become its conjugate acid. The conjugate acid, of course, is charged and therefore is less likely to become reabsorbed. We can drive the reaction in this direction by adding the salt ammonium chloride, which of course is NH4 plus Cl minus. And in this case, it is the ammonium ion, which contributes protons to the urine. Now that we understand that more polarized substances and charged substances are more easily excreted by the kidney, let's take a look at how the liver modifies drugs to make them more polar and thus more readily cleared. 
In the liver, there are two main types of metabolism. Phase 1, which is carried out by the large enzyme family, known as the cytochrome P450s. And Phase 2 metabolism, which is carried out by another set of enzymes, and mainly results in the conjugation of different functional groups to a drug. As you can see, Phase 2 reactions typically result in the acetylation, glucuronidation, and sulfation of drugs. And these are all relatively big and very polar functional groups, which also render the drug inactive. These modified drugs, of course, can be excreted by the kidneys. Phase 1 reactions tend to make smaller alterations, and they typically rely on chemical reactions such as reduction, oxidation, and hydrolysis. The modified drugs are slightly more polar than they were, and hence more water-soluble, but often the drugs still have some pharmacologic activity.